Oh, you didn't know? Yo ass better call somebody! This podcast proudly presents to you the Zero Time Tag Team Champions of the World! The Road Dog, JJ Brownlee! The Badass, JB Faulkner! Total Spot Fest Live! With the ninth one of the world, Nick. And welcome to, or welcome back to Total Spot Fest Live. I am JJ Brownlee, and with me is my co-host, Mr. Jamie Faulkner. Marks. Zero marks, is that what you're doing right there? Yep. Okay, whatever. Uh, and joined, joining us tonight is a man who talks a big game, but he does not back it up. It is the ninth wonder of the world, Nick. Fake it till you make it, baby. Sure, maybe you'll make it one day. Who knows? <laughs> I appreciate the moral support. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Well, thank you guys for joining <laughs> us. We appreciate you uh, returning. Or if this is your first time, welcome to Total Spot Fest Live. We do this every, right now, Tuesday and Thursday. This is the start of WrestleMania week and a half-ish. Uh, so... Uh, over the next week, we're going to have some additional shows that we were putting out. Uh, this is our WWE Power Hour. We're going to go over last week's Go Home NXT. Uh, a Go Home-ish SmackDown. We'll talk about that. And the Go Home yeah. Raw all in preparation of TakeOver and Mania. On Thursday, we'll be back to our AEW chat. And then uh, the following Monday, this weekend, we'll be really recording and we'll release on Monday... Uh, a TakeOver review, a separate TakeOver review, a separate WrestleMania review, and then we'll get back into the rather regular rhythm again. The f- week afterwards, as a reminder, we're going to switch up our format just a smidge based on your guys' feedback, what we asked from you and what you told us we want to do. But we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, if you are listening to us, feel free. You can definitely watch us on YouTube, too, so you can see our faces. You see how JJ just did not get the white shirt memo, you sons of bitches. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, if you are watching and you're offended by JJ's gray shirt, you can just listen to us wherever you want. But search us on YouTube at Total Spot Fest Live. Give us a subscribe. Give us a like. Give us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, also, uh, we're available, like I said, all your other podcast uh, places, Apple, Amazon, all, all the things. So thank you guys for giving, for joining us. Uh, Jamie, uh, Nick, you guys ready to talk about a little WWE world action stuff? Let's get it on. I don't know. W. 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 Let's go. I don't know where I was going with that. So, all right. Well, before <laughs> well before we get into WWE, uh, one thing. Also, follow us on Twitter, Total Spot Fest Live. Should have said that at the beginning. My bad. But please, before we get into WWE, I want to spend just a couple minutes going over news. Not there's a, a lot of stuff going on, but I don't want to take too much time out of this. So I'm just going to do a couple noteworthy things. First and foremost is. Something not related to WWE in the least, but New Japan oriented. Well, that's kind of related to WWE because uh, Will Ospreay is the brand new IWGP Divas, I mean, World Heavyweight Champion. I hate the belt. Yay. I hate the belt. Sorry. I only, I only saw the highlights through Twitter. I did like the whole like Twitter like updating, refresh, look at the next highlight, next highlight, next highlight. And oh my god, if if you're not familiar with Will Ospreay, go online, look him up now. Pause this, look him up, come back because he deserves it. This is great. So, he's worth a Google. He is worth several Googles. So, he is your new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, New Japan also announced a new championship. Now, they they assimilated the World Heavyweight and the Intercontinental into the World Heavyweight title, right? Uh, it's not replacing mm-hmm. it necessarily, but it is a new title. It is going to be the NJPW Strong Open Weight Championship. I had to write that down because that's a complicated title. <laughs> That's so bad marketing, it's, man. That's what it's that bad is. marketing. It's a better belt than the World Heavyweight belt. It's a pretty cool looking belt. Uh, it is a pretty cool it's belt. A pretty, I like it's it a better pretty nice than the World Championship. <laughs> I do. I mean, I wanted to like the World Championship belt. I really did. It just, I don't. I'm sorry. If you like it, 
cool good on you now the winner That's of cool. the new japan cup usa will be the first NJPW strong open weight champion. That's a, that's a terrible. That's a terribly long title. So uh, it'll just end up becoming the NWJP strong champion. Yeah, is what it should be. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, just don't I, worry about the I open the, weight. But, J- Japanese, that's the Japanese, Japanese thing. They thing. care about weight. They it, care they about do. weight. They do, and they like their trios championship has an odd name to it. It's whatever. It's it is a whole thing. So so cool stuff going on in New Japan. They announced what the New Japan Cup is. I didn't write it down. I'm sorry, but it's uh, Leo Rush is in it and uh, a couple others. It's gonna be it's gonna be some good stuff. New Japan's been killing it. We're talking a lot more about New Japan. There's a spoiler alert for you guys here in a few weeks. Uh, lastly, the kind of New Japan related or Japan related is uh, B Priestley wrestled her last match in Stardom. She's moving back to yes. the UK where it's suspected that she's gonna be joining. NXT UK, which is some kind of interesting. Uh, B. Priestley, if you're not familiar, she had a brief stint. Uh, she was one of the initial signees for the women's division in AEW. Uh, amicably mm-hmm. got released, and you know, because she wanted to be born in Japan, and you know, COVID, and she couldn't travel, whatever. So uh, she is Will Ospreay's partner uh, in real life, but uh, she's going to be rumored to be joining NXT UK. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of NXT, there's there was a report that was put out there about why WWE brass kind of soured on NXT getting a push. Uh, they said it was due to the losing of ratings uh, and a combination of COVID, interestingly enough. So uh, the COVID thing was that there seemed to be COVID outbreaks, even though they mandated that everybody show up and be extras and be forced into small sections at the very beginning of the pandemic. And, mm-hmm. you know, the trade center went closed down. It became a breeding ground for COVID. Even though that happened, apparently the, the upper brass, Bruce Pritchard, you know, uh, Vince McMahon, all, all these jagoffs, uh, <laughs> apparently they... They didn't want their main stars getting COVID, so they're afraid of going there. Plus, it didn't help them when they brought down uh, Becky Lynch to face off against whoever it was, I can't remember, uh, on NXT TV, thinking our top number one star will surely win, and they got they got destroyed by Nick Jackson and Ray Phoenix. So, just, you know, that's why t- the Tuesday move makes some sense, that they're kind of like, whatever, we're over it. And, that's, and we've said before... This is the best for everybody. So, whatever. Unintentional side effects. Uh, one last bit about uh, WWE. So, Triple H had a little thing. I, just, I, I wrote this down because I, I, you guys and your crutches. So, uh, he was asked again about CM Punk. And he said that he last spoke to CM Punk about a year and a half, year and three quarters ago. And someone said, well, do you ever think about reaching out to him? And he goes, "If he, we know all the same people. and We're in the same circles. If he's interested, I'll know about it. And if we're interested, he'll know about it, and we'll have the conversation and make an announcement. Right now, I don't see that ever changing anytime soon. So, from the horse's mouth, stop asking for CM Punk to come back. He's not. He's done wrestling. Could care less about CM Punk. Off my sofa. False. False. I could. I know you feel differently. Will Will Osprey challenged him to a match. I don't know if he saw. Uh, he, it he he did. did was it like right after like the press conference or on Twitter or whatever? Yeah. Right after he did. Yeah. Right and after. Yeah. he had long said, CM Punk did at least that he if he returned to to wrestling, it had to be like match specific, situation specific. He wouldn't just return for a big ass contract or whatever. It'd have to be something that interests him. And will Way, will will Osprey? Wow. <laughs> will Will Osprey? Okay. Does Will Osprey warrant that? Uh, who knows? We'll see. I could care less to see him back wrestling. I think so. He's probably the best athlete in all of wrestling. He would obliterate CM Punk. CM, how long has it been since CM Punk wrestles? Eight years now. What, six. I thought it was longer than that. I mean, I, all I know is that he went and got his ass hand to him in the UFC like in three matches, and that was it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a he's a prize fighter, sure. He's a shade of what he once was, and I'm going to stop bitching about him. So, I do like you, though, CM Punk. Don't get he's upset. A wrestler. Just settle down. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm speaking truth. He's not that good. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, people will pay to see him. They won't pay to see uh No, they, they sure won't. Not a dollar. 
Well, I mean, right now nobody's paying to see him because he's not going to fucking wrestle. So there you go. Cameron Grimes at least wrestles. So you're wrong in that statement. People do pay to see Cameron Grimes. All right. One last thing on uh, this here. So uh, I don't understand why I get so upset. This is what we were talking about, Jamie. You know, we come in here and we want to have a good time, just friends talking wrestling. And JJ oh, always you. has to blow his stack over CM Punk, and it's just it's just not called for. I, I do it because you guys knowingly, you guys knowingly like, like like try to like get at me, make me visceral because you think it's good radio. By, nah. by blowing up Reginald, who you have no legitimate like love for. I know you Googled him and saw a couple of his matches, Jamie, but you you had no idea this man even wrestled before you did that. And you know, you only did it because I hate him so much. And then you're like, hey, oh, he likes he likes Cameron Grimes. We're gonna we're gonna go against it. You you got No, I legitimately hate Cameron Grimes. I'm sorry. Okay. That's legit I legit he That's fine. Okay. I legitimately don't like CM Punk. And I haven't okay. since he'd been in the WWE. I liked him in Ring of Honor and that was when I and when he left I there, so I stopped liking him. Hated his shtick in WWE, like, like his his whole like soapbox, you know, promo. Everyone says the greatest promo ever. I don't agree with that statement. Never have, never will. Sorry, I just don't. That's your opinion. <laughs> That's your opinion, and you're entitled to it. And I'm entitled to my opinion. I don't like CM Punk. He's not that good. Get over Love it. Love you. <laughs> that's the truth and you know you guys you guys go with this assumption that i should whatever so we're getting off topic here i don't want this to run too long yes. so a couple last things apparently tnt was not happy with AEW having sting as a surprise after it happened they came to the brass and tony khan and were like um yeah no more surprise you let us know next time something like that happens we want to hype it up and get the viewers They're like okay that's why paul white was announced on social media before he appeared on TV. I thought that was interesting. Mm. Uh, Pac apparently hurt his ankle at Revolution. That's why you haven't seen him. That's why Lucha Brothers have come back together. So he's not he's not COVID. He's not gone. He's not stuck in England. He just hurt his ankle. And I thought this was really cool. So uh, the New Day raised over eleven thousand dollars in honor of Brody Lee to some Rochester based chair. I can't remember what it was, what his wife said they wanted to do. They raised over eleven thousand dollars in the honor of Brody Lee by auctioning off their Brody Lee uh, tribute Royal Rumble gear. Just another reason why the New Day are just so awesome guys. So New Day? Yeah. They're just good dudes. Just like good. No matter no what matter. I have to support them. Absolutely. So let's talk about some actual wrestling, shall we? Uh, before we get into it, uh, numbers from last week. So AEW came in 700,000. NXT, 654. So a little closer of a gap. Both shows were down, though. Uh, not surprising. This is, you know, b- calm before the storm. And we're in kind of a you know lull for AEW right now. So not, not totally surprising. Uh, side note, mm-hmm. SmackDown had 2.137 million viewers on Friday. And last week's Raw, not last night's, last week's Raw, 1.7 million viewers. So I just, many dumb people out there, man. Well, I mean, but this is, you know, some, you know remember when Raw was drawing in 4 and 5 million? Easy. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. That's what gets me. So anyway, it's the times they haven't changed. Speaking of times to change, and let's let's change and talk about NXT. So this is the Takeover Go Home show. A lot of this was very Takeover WWE typical Takeover stuff, right? So with one or two major exceptions. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on each individual thing, but we'll do a quick little run through. So the show opened with Jamie's favorite wrestler Cameron Grimes fighting off against Roderick Strong, and. No matter what you think about him, this match, at least in my humble opinion, this match was a very solid match because they paired two bruisers together and they got a good result. And you guys... Yeah, Roddy carried it. Roddy carried that match for sure. All really? he did was you just know, throw him around the ring for like 20 minutes. Did you guys that's even all see he, the that's all that standing happened. Spanish fly? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched. You don't like that? You every time anybody is close to a lion tamer, you shoot your load, but you see just, an actual good move, like a like a Spanish fly, nah, it, and you're it, like, whoa. whatever. <laughs> whoa! You're saying a lion tamer is not a good move? It's not as good as a Spanish fly. I mean, it's a it's a good move. Incorrect. No, 
No, I am correct. Comment down below. Lion Tamer or Spanish Fly? What do you like better? So, I mean, I like a good Spanish Fly. I just don't like Cameron Grimes's because I just don't like Cameron I Grimes. Usually, you, just can't, Legit. you cannot see past it. It's, that's, that's the thing that gets me is that, yes, his shtick is his shtick is kind is corny, and I love it because it's corny. But his shtick is corny and it's annoying, and that's his that's his deal. But you can't see past it and the way he's made dolled up to, you know, to see the wrestler that he is. That's 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 I think legitimate truth because he's actually a very good wrestler. He's a good bruising wrestler. He has always been, you know. Maybe if he was more like Jake something or like the you know in, in Impact, if he was more of that style of country boy. Maybe you guys would like him more, but I get it. I understand. You don't like his stick. That's fine. I think he needs about 25 pounds of muscle. Then I might appreciate his stick. Okay. Well, you know, if you're a conditioning coach at the NXT performance center, put him on, put him on weight program. So, uh, where's Pritchard would, uh, I doubt it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it ends with Cameron Grimes, uh, pulls a, something out of his, 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 uh, his, trousers and uh his tights excuse me i don't know what to call them his tights and you think it's like i a like trousers object. that was cool hey it's, we're gonna start saying that trousers. for him yeah so he pulls out you think it's a foreign object it's actually a, a, a undisputed air armband and uh as he pulls it out he gets like suplexed and then he drops the armband and that distracts roddy roddy kept getting distracted by a fan wearing an undisputed air shirt and they're setting up this they're setting up a really good long-term angle with roddy that's part of the reason i like this match too is because it wasn't just a wrestling match it was more for roddy because let's be honest Roderick Strong, by himself, is not a person that can build a character and carry it like Adam Cole can. Okay? True story. Correct. So Absolutely they're correct. giving him this great setup. And he gets distracted, and the camera grinds end up going in getting the win. Okay, so uh, you go backstage, and after that, you quick little training promo with Karrion Cross. Yeah, he's a killer, right? Still needs a better finisher. Still needs a better finisher. And then you have a Walter promo. Lot, go home shows. Lots of promos. Walter promo, <clears throat> followed by a notice that NXT is moving to Thursdays officially. We already knew that, but they officially... Tuesdays. 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 Impacts Tuesdays. on Thursdays. Everything's everything's moving yes. everywhere. Okay. Then you got Santos Escobar issuing open challenge, answered by Tyler Breeze, which I thought was interesting because just like the first match, these are two guys who are the same style wrestler pretty much. They're not... Mm -hmm. solely you know aerials and they're not t solely t they're that very kind of balanced you know cruiser right esque so this was a very good match it really was Tyler I enjoyed it I enjoyed Tyler it. Breeze doesn't get the credit he deserved when he was originally in NXT he was one of the cornerstones right and he is legitimately still got great wrestling chops this was a fantastic match um there was an unprettier that was reversed into a phantom driver uh, for the win. So Escobar got the win. Then MSK came out, who gave a decent ass promo for MSK. They actually didn't mm -hmm. suck on the mics, which is thumbs up. I've become a big MSK fan. I mean, I liked him as the Rascals, but I, I've become a big MSK fan now. Uh, then, Agreed. And then he had a video package that kind of superseded it. The Grizzly Young Veterans, who I'm not a fan of. Their promo, I just can't stand it. Uh, setting up their triple threat match. Once again, more promos, promos, promos. Uh, then you get a promo with The Way. And this is the one I... Okay, I had extra notes on this one because I love The Way so much, okay? So, Johnny's still upset with, uh, with 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 William Regal. He's Cuckoo Bananas now. That's now his, like, thing he calls him, which is great. Uh, Austin then asks if Johnny's ever... Because he's asking him about, like, the... He, he doesn't think it's fair, this whole gauntlet eliminator and the battle royal going on. And why is Austin Theory even in it? And Austin goes, well, Johnny, you ever heard of the finger poke of doom? <laughs> to which Johnny just goes, this is great. What? Wait, that killed the business. And I'm like, okay, there's a little, there's a little dig at the books. Okay, thanks for that. But, uh, but they're suggesting that Austin Theory wins, wins the Gauntlet Eliminator, then they'll do Finger Poke of Doom Night Two to take over for Johnny, which. Yeah, you know, it fits them. It fits them very well. By the way, mm -hmm. Andy Hartwell is still thirsty for Dexter Loomis. Yes, and, if you, and I'm here for if it. If you follow NXT's uh, uh, Instagram account, she took over the Instagram, and they used to have, you know, time to time, 
superstars taking over. She took over her Instagram account on uh, Wednesday night. And the whole time, she was going backstage asking people if they seen Dexter, if they think her and Dexter be together. You know, and like Raquel Gonzalez is just like rolling her eyes at her. And Io Shirai just goes, no, no. No, and, and then the very final one is like her leaving for the end of the day. Well, I couldn't find Dexter, but it's a better luck tomorrow. And then she or she walks out the camera, and then from stage right, here comes Dexter Loomis, kind of walking over. He just kind of stops halfway and looks at the door, and then fades to black. It's like, oh, I love it. It's so good. It's so good. So Andy Hart was become one of my new favorites, just because I just I cannot get over how great that I like this. I agree. Nick, you, see, you, st- you still hate the use of some Dexter Loomis? Yeah, I mean... Uh... I think you said he was starting to grow on you a little bit. No, no, I did not. I did no such thing. <laughs> what did you say? You said that maybe you didn't hate him as vehement. I don't know. Oh, well, he does, maybe, he maybe, doesn't, maybe he can grow. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, anger me like he did upon my uh, first time witnessing him. Now he's just mm-hmm. annoying, but... There's a lot of annoying wrestlers, so he's one of many. Okay, well, touche to each his own. I I, I personally like this <laughs> a lot better. I, I like this a lot better than his Impact version because the Impact version was the exact same character without the mustache, different color hair, uh, the tortured artist. Except he spoke, and he spoke a lot, and he was like a visible stalker of women. And I will say this, Jay, extra creepy. This is more just kind of. I remember. You know, uh, I remember you bringing that up, so I looked it up earlier. And I actually will agree with you. This is a better version. The last one, oh, I don't know I how he pulled it off, but the last <laughs> one was actually creepier. Well, that was like that, that was like that was like that was like near the end of Dixie Carter's reign. Like after Dixie Carter got put through a table, you know, uh, Impact Wrestling when they were really bad before I think before Billy Corgan got involved with them. That's how mm-hmm. that's that's how low they were when he was there. So they were basically like they didn't give a flying <laughs> F. Just do whatever you want out there. And that was his character and, and yeah, super creepy. Um so then he had a it was bad. Then he had another then he had a weird promo with a Pomeranian. Okay, before the commercial there's a Pomeranian walking around and Beth Phoenix doesn't know what to make out of this. <laughs> I loved I loved her in this these promos. That whole thing, yeah, she was the best thing. About she the was the best thing. thing by far about the promos. And there, this promo last week uh, was about Io Shirai getting beat up. That's a re- put a pin in that. I'll come back to that. Okay. So then you have Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell taking on Gigi Dolan, and what was it? It's a new girl. Like Jobber Zeta number two. Ramiro. Zeta Ramiro. I think that's it. I probably missed whatever. But it's some new girl that we don't know. So it's just a yeah. jobber. Uh, Gigi Dolan, formerly yeah. Priscilla Kelly. Uh, Priscilla Presley. Priscilla, Priscilla Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, Priscilla. Wow. I, I am just butchering names today. Priscilla Presley. Uh, she was <laughs> Kelly. Of Nick Darby Green Allen's fans. ex-wife. Okay, that's who. Darby. Priscilla Darby Kelly. Allen's ex-wife. That's who that is. Anyway, uh, this is this is a squash match. This is setting up. You know. Um, you know. Basically, Castle Ray, Indy Hartwell win. Uh, Indy, Indy was really showing the power game, which I like. Her Instagram mm-hmm. is full of her doing a lot of like, like, like you know, weight work, and you can tell she's like, I, I legitimately have like, have like, have like a crush on Indy just because of her character is great, and I love this whole thirst trapping thing she's got going on for Dexter Loomis, but. I can see her developing that power game. You know, she's got good size. She's only like an inch or two shorter than uh, Raquel Gonzalez. And she keeps developing that power game. She's got, I mean, she's young too. She's what, like 23, 24? So, yeah. she's, got a, she's got a pretty bright future, I think. But uh, they challenge uh, uh, for the tag team titles. And then out comes Shotzi and Ember in the tank. And, you know, they, they do all their catch lo- catchphrases and then they accept. Uh, and then they shoot their little tank with the Nerf football. It hits Indy Hartwell right in her crotch, which was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay, there's a party shot for you. So there's that. Uh, then you have uh, Raquel Gonzalez, who's on her way to the ring. She's got a match coming up. And Io Shirai confronts her. And Io just gets beat up, basically, is what happens. So once again, we're keeping that theme going. Io confronts Raquel. She gets beat up. Go to commercial, but there's another Pomeranian promo with Beth Phoenix losing her damn mind. It gets yeah, what's up with this dog? It gets, it gets progressively more and more aggressive too. It's like Beth, Jesus Christ! Yeah. It's just it's a cute little Pomeranian. It's okay. Um, 
Then you go, come back for commercial before the next match. You go backstage. Roddy is just leaving. Got his coat on, he's got his bag, and one of the announcers comes up. And, What's going on? He just goes, I'm done with all of it. It's like, ooh. So he's not in the, he's not in the main event anymore. It's now an 11-man battle royal, not 12. And like I said, they're setting up some good long-term storytelling with Roddy, I hope. so. I hope that. they take mm-hmm. him up to Rod and bury him. <laughs> 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 Insert picture of Cameron Grimes now. All right. So, I'm going to leave it up there for a match. I'll take it down. Though. Don't worry. I did that just so and I could so, see Jamie's face, and he delivered. I appreciate it. She's the Messiah. That, okay, we're not going to go on. All right. Raquel Gonzalez face off against Zoe Stark next. This was a very good match, even though the two were opposing styles. Zoe Stark continues to just outshine. Even though she's, she's won her first match, she hasn't won shit since. She lost this one, too. Uh, she got just obliterated by, was it two of the, like, one-arm power bombs? She, yeah, what are they, what's she calling them yet? Do we I don't know? think they have a name. They call it just a one-arm, one-arm power slam is what they're calling it. Um, they don't, they don't have, like, a like finisher a name. Bomb. It needs a finisher name. Here's the thing. Raquel doesn't really have a gimmick, you know? Like, Other than she's just yeah, a big she's brute. Just a badass. Yeah, she's a big brute, big whatever. So, I mean, you could call it whatever you want. She's Tex. She's from Texas, so you could call it something Texan-themed. I don't know. But it's a good finisher. It just needs a name, as opposed to Karrion Crosses, which is a bad finisher. So, yeah. Eo then Eo Shrai comes out then to confront Raquel, and she just gets ragdolled into the barrier. Like their match is going to be so great because Eo can take bumps and Raquel can give bumps, and the two of them together. I'm telling you, this is going to be a fantastic women's. It's, it's rightfully the main event night one. She just picks her up, and just boom, right into the barrier, like eight feet away. It's like, like look like she yeah. broke her in half. She broke her in half. <laughs> God, my witness, she broke her in half. All right. We could do the let's bring Nick back. Let's, let's get rid of camera <laughs> drives. Let's bring Nick back. All right. That's what we're going to do. You don't think I'm going to do it. You don't know as we're recording. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freaking do it. So there's another Pomeranian uh, uh, promo before commercial. Then you come back and an interview with Kushida interrupted by Pete Dunn. Oh, God, yes, please. This is what we called for, Jamie, when uh, you're over here. Mm-hmm. So we called for when they were, when Pete Dunn was giving his promo. Kushida, Pete Dunn, give me this all night long. Yes. Dude, I want uh, yes. Pete Dunn to get and a little bass yes. in his voice. He's a little weak on the mic. Not not like his content, just the sound of his voice and his delivery sounds really. I just, I think he's just. You, I think he's keep it sparing on the mic. Like yeah. he's like he's that just type of that yeah. mean Brit, you know. Just uh, yeah. don't talk. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, get get him a manager. There you go. Yeah, give him Make Michael Bivens guy. for God's sake. I mean, frick Tyler, get rid of Tyler Russ. Go go to Dunn. That's what you want to be. Anywho, uh, then you have an extended promo. They call it Prime Target. They're recapping all of Adam Cole and Kyle oh, O'Reilly. Yeah. It's what I. I I have no idea how long that lasted. I went, I went and got a bite to eat. So uh, come back, and Casey Catanzaro, who apparently is not as injured as we thought, or wasn't as severe as we thought. We're not doctors, though. So mm-hmm. Whatever. She's uh, with Caden Carter against supposed to be Zia Lee and Tian Shaw. I think I'm saying that right. Probably yep. not. No, yep. you are. Oh, yeah, I am. Tian Shaw. Good job. Hey, yeah. put a little halo. Ding. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to do the graphic. That takes too much time. So. It's supposed to be a tag match. I say supposed to because Tina Shaw just doesn't get out of her chair. <laughs> she stays there. So it's Zia Lee doing, uh, you know, two on one against Caden and Casey. Um, there are some good spots by Casey. I'm, I keep being impressed with Casey, her, her improvement as a technical aspect to her wrestling. Like she is getting much better. You can tell she's putting in work. There were some good spots. Ultimately, though, they didn't matter. Um, Kaden goes down to confront Tian Shaw, and she like gives her like a choke, she grabs her by her like her like where her Adam's apple would be, but like right under her her like you know jaw, her chin, and then vapes in her face, and she passes out or whatever. So there's that. And then and then yeah. Zia Lee gets the win. So with a brutal, brutal SOS kick. 
because that's what that was. Is a is a disaster kick, SOS kick, whatever you want to say. It was. I that didn't even notice you are you are that song bitch connected. <laughs> it's like bam. It was like ooh. That's that's the side effect of wrestling a smaller opponent like you know Casey is that you can your shots on them look even better. Like I mean shit when Raquel did the one arm power bomb to her down there put her through the ring the SOS kick here that she did looked great you know it's like that's one of the things you have a smaller opponent and they just look like stuff done on Ray Phoenix is the same way Ray Mysterio they, they the way they could take it looks so good because they're small so uh quick backstage interview with uh, Raquel Gonzalez where she's again attacked by Io Shirai and again, Raquel uh, beats her up. But this time, she practically murders her. So she picks her up and literally, like, like picks her up, like, two arms, like, under under her collarbone and just throws her like a, like, like, like a, like a, like a bag of, of, of potatoes. Just throws her through a wall. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cool. It looked great. It looked fantastic. Uh, one more Pomeranian spot with a CU on 413. That's the first Tuesday night that uh, NXT is going to be there. And it's signed by Frankie. Uh, Frankie is, I found out, what Tara Valkyrie's new uh, moniker is going to be. So this whole thing's a Tara Valkyrie promo. The Pomeranian. Yep. You look back, you're like, well, of course it was. It's a Pomeranian. She's playing that L.A., you know, like Morrison, you know, girl, whatever. So it was. Yeah. Uh, yep. Chop a pump promo, and then they recap the takeover card. So once again, night one, Walter Ciampa, tag team triple threat match, North American title number one gauntlet eliminator, which we'll find out in just a moment who that's going to be. Io Shirai, Raquel Gonzalez. Night two is Escobar, Devlin, uh, cruiserweight unification ladder match, uh, Shotzi and Ember versus the Way. For the women's tag titles, Johnny Gargano versus the winner of the Eliminator from the night before for North American title. Finn Bauer, Karrion Cross, NXT title. That's four title matches in one night. And Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, unsanctioned match. All right. Nice. <clears throat> so we got through all that. Here's the Gauntlet Eliminator. Now, this was by far the... Up until then, it was a typical go-home show. It's like, whatever. You know, there's some good stuff. There's a couple good matches. It was fine. But this is where the night went from good to great, in my opinion. Uh, well, maybe not great, mm -hmm. but it went from back to whoa. So, uh, once again, 11 men. Kushida, Austin Theory, Jake Atlas, Cameron Grimes, Tyler Rust, Dexter Loomis, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Leon Ruff, L.A. Knight, Pete Dunn, and Bronson Reed are your entrants. There are spots all over the place, right? So... Leon Ruff and, and Isaiah Swerve Scott, they start brawling before the bell even rings. Okay, so they go to commercial, they come back, everybody's in the ring. Let's get started. So, um, I love this part. Dexter Loomis is one in the corner, and everybody starts and they pair off. And nobody goes near him, and he doesn't move for the first three quarters of this match. Spoiler. But yeah. he just stays there. He just stood there. And nobody came to him, and he yeah, didn't go Pete to... Pete Dunn looked at him once. Pete Dunn goes... <laughs> No, yeah, it just went up to yeah, I, yeah everybody. Every I think a couple of them. I think you know, like uh, uh, Cameron kind of moved up to him a little bit, and uh, Jake Atlas, started, you know. But nobody. It, I love it. It was fantastic. So you basically eliminated a whole corner out of the ring. So that made it even better. Uh, Jake Atlas, the first one to go. So he got thrown over onto the apron, standing on the apron, has his foot grabbed by Malcolm Bivens, and then Swerve kicks him off the rope. That's your first elimination. Jake Atlas out. And then Tyler Russ gets eliminated by Swerve shortly thereafter. Um, while he's kind of there celebrating or whatever, he gets eliminated by Swerve. That's number two. Uh, Austin Theory ends up on the apron, and he gets butt bumped by Bronson Reed. But he lands on the floor on his back. So his feet are in the That's air hilarious. like a crab, right? And, he, he, and they're like, you're still in. Your feet haven't touched. You're still in. You're still in. So he sits there, he's like, uh, uh, he goes, oh, I know what to do. He does a kip up. He's proud of himself because it was a very good looking kip up. But his feet are now touching the ground. And he's eliminated. So, uh, bye bye, Austin Theory. There's that. Still, nobody's even come close to the Dexter Loomis. Uh, Kushida and Dunn then just eliminate each other, which we find out after they go to commercial come back that a match added to night one to take over Pete Dunn Kushida. I'm calling it right now. That match is going to steal the weekend. I think that's going to be the best match for wrestling match. Takeover Mania. That's my prediction right now. 
Ooh, that's a bold that's statement. A that is pretty bear, bold, I, man. I'm, pretty bold. I'm going out there. I know. I think TakeOver's got a lot of good matches. There's some stuff that could actually be good on my on Mania, but I think... And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'm wrong. But I think that'll be the best match. We'll see what happens. Uh, I think you have the right, right show, wrong match. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll talk about that here when we wrap up NXT. So LA Knight then casually tries to engage Dexter Loomis. LA Knight, I just I, I cannot stress how much I love his character. It's great. Same, same. Then Johnny Gargano comes out and joins commentary where he's fantastic on. Um, Reed Bronson Reed then grabs both Ruff and Swerve uh, from the top rope. Oh, by the way, at this point here we've got our six uh, people who are going to be in it. So. Um, after, uh, who was the last one that got eliminated? Was it, uh, uh, when Kushida and uh, Pete Dunne eliminated themselves, we were our top yep. six. So Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Leon Ruff, LA Knight, and Bronson Reed. Those are your six who are in the gauntlet eliminator. Okay. So now we're fighting for position, reverse position entrance for the eliminator. Uh, so Bronson Reed grabs both, Ru- uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott and Leon Ruff, who are on the top rope for whatever reason, because that's a great idea in a battle royal, right? But they're, they're just fighting with each other, and then he eliminates both of them. Well, Leon Ruff's feet hit first, so he'll be the first person in the eliminator, and then Swerve Scott, he'll be the second. So those two will start off the gauntlet eliminator. Then, uh, Cameron Grimes and LA Knight, uh, both try to eliminate Reed, and uh, then out of nowhere, here comes Dexter Loomis finally joining the match. Assist them, they eliminate Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed is uh, your number three entrant in the Eliminator. Well, Cameron hold Grime. on, hold on. Don't just, don't just, you know, get past that. How? I mean, Dexter Loomis cold cocked your boy. I mean, he cracked him right in the jaw. It's the only positive thing he's ever contributed. I, I, have, I haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just want to make sure you didn't. You try are not to, there. You, yet. you, you, sure you, you keep, see, like, kids, you keep doing this. It's like I'm literally about to say something, and you're like, "Stop, stop!" I want you miss this. Like, no, you're like 30 seconds too early. I just want to make sure Freaking you don't chill. sugarcoat yeah. it. That's all. I know you're gonna try and gloss over it. Camera grinds. All right, so. <laughs> Cameron Grimes then, like I was trying to say, then tries to bribe both Dexter Loomis and L.A. Knight. Pulls out a big wad of gun and, and L.A. Knight's put, well, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. What do you think? What do you think? And then Dexter Loomis, okay, pull away Cameron Grimes. Then Dexter Loomis legitimately just cold cocks the crap out of Cameron Grimes, uh, gets eliminated, and then... That made my heart happy, by the way. Too. I know it did. I know he is in the match, though, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, and then and then LA Knight goes through the middle rope and then pulls Loomis off the apron. So somehow during all this happened, uh, Dexter Loomis ended up um, on the apron, and he goes through the middle rope, so he never was eliminated, and pulls him off the apron. And then it goes back in the ring. LA Knight's your final entrant. So, yeah. very S- I liked how they did SMRT. That. So, the order's set. Uh, and that sets your card. That's it. Uh, except for one final thing. After they're done, you know, LA Knight goes over and he jars over at, at Johnny Gargano. Whatever. There's that whole thing going on. And then out comes Io Shirai. And she's just yelling and screaming in Japanese. Because she didn't die from being thrown through the wall like a bag of potatoes. And she calls out, uh, and then uh, here comes Rico Gonzalez, because she's been beating her up all night. Why, why stop now, right? So she comes out. They start just going at each other, and then the whole, they say the whole women's locker room is like all their developmental talent. There was like, I think Dakota Kai and maybe one or two other women that I actually recognized that were there, and a lot of people that I didn't know who they were. But they come out, and, you know, they just brawl, and then, you know, Eel, Eel jumps off the top of the... Uh, the 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 top turnbuckle all the way down onto all of them, and it ends with you know Eo standing tall. So they they set up they did really good setting up Eo and, and Raquel. The Gauntlet Eliminator I thought was very good match. Um, and yeah, card's complete. You got the way. You got uh, Kashida and Pete Dunne now added to Takeover. What'd you guys think? 
<laughs> Nick? Uh, I mean, yeah, I've kind of said my bit. I guess the only thing I would add is we need to uh, enjoy Zoe Stark while we can because she's, she's got a very sharp and high trajectory. She's got star power like crazy. And just based on that alone, she's going to get stolen by Raw and SmackDown, and too. they're going to yeah. ruin her. So we got to enjoy her yeah. while we got her. That will happen. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So if, if, we, if we're to rank this show, What's 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 three snooze fest? Squash. Three, 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 three is squash. Okay, I'll give it a three. I was giving I'll it. Nice. I was giving it a snooze fest until the eliminator happened. Even with the stuff with EO, yeah. this is go home show. It's a lot of promos. It's boring. Yeah. But the eliminator was was good as we projected it to be. I'll give it a squash. Just just barely. That's where I'm at. Barely, Barely a squash. Almost went to a snooze because I got Cameron Grimes too much on my team, <laughs> but I let it go. Yeah. So, um, hey, hey, you you guys like go home shows? Let's do some more go home shows. So, well, hold on, hold on. Oh. I I want to I want to add something oh, about NXT because they have, they have betting lines out. They actually have the betting lines out. Oh, right that's now. right. Because of the whole DraftKings the crap. That's right. Yeah. So, the NXT women's title match, Raquel Gonzalez is favored right now. Hmm, interesting. Um, which I thought was kind of interesting. The vacant NXT uh, tag team triple threat match, MSK is actually the one who is favored That doesn't on this, surprise and me. Legato Del Fantasma is 100% the long shot. And then the NXT UK title, Walter, I mean, <laughs> that's just obvious. So, I'm sorry, me. Chapa, you're not winning that match. Yeah, this one's kind of fun. The Gauntlet Eliminator match with the winner for the North American title night one. It's Dexter Loomis versus The Field. That's actually how they have it. Oh, really? They're actually saying, yeah. So they actually have it as The Field's going to win. And I totally disagree. I think Dexter's going to win. Um, I would take The obviously Field. Obviously, we have to go to Megan. I would this. take yeah. The Field. I, my pick would be Bronson, but I think I would take The Field. And then um, singles match of Pete Dunn versus Kushida. Pete Dunn is favored. Okay. And okay. Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross is heavily favored. Like that, is, heavily. that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this one's kind of interesting. The cruiserweight unification match. Even. Hmm. Even Steven. Slip of a coin. Okay. Oh, that was a little interesting. Um, and then the unsanctioned match. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly is barely favored. Okay. Ooh, Kyle is really. That's that's that's, that's yeah. somewhat surprising. What about the women's tag? That's the only one you missed. Women's tag. They actually have uh, Ember and Shotzi retaining. Oh, okay. And since we don't know uh, Gargano's uh, opponent, they There's, didn't put that on, be a on line the list. For that. Yeah. I think it's interesting they're doing Loomis versus the field. That's interesting. I think it's accurate, but obviously. I mean. Once we have Megan look at these and she tells us that's exactly how it's going to be, yeah. we don't know. I don't we care can't, what we can't, Vegas we can't says. Just to... let me know what Megan's got. We just got to know what her picks. We can't because we always do our picks, remember, and you know, Megan's, Megan's probably going to destroy us again. So. Dude, I'm totally going to go to DraftKings and do exactly <laughs> what she has. I'm going to put 50 bucks on her or whatever. Hey, might as, we well. Win, might as well. Might as well. It's Disney money. So let's, let's move forward. Now we're going to go quickly through the next two because uh, Raw and SmackDown were – Raw and SmackDown, but mm-hmm. there was there was a few things that happened. It's go home shows, so you know what do you expect? So uh, SmackDown started with a match. No, they did. No, they did. They didn't start the no, match. No, uh, it started with surprise uh, promo for Universal Title picture. Whatever, all this stuff. Universal Title, Universal Title, Edge backstage. I have I have wrote down all the tallies. I have I have timestamps and added it all. Just just cause, you know you're gonna like that. Uh, so all this stuff going on, uh, and then they announced next week, there's an Alpha Academy <laughs> promo. <laughs> that, that, that's literally how I felt. I'm glad, uh, yeah. So Alpha Academy Progo, by the way, they have a catchphrase now. It's for the Academy. Dude, that, uh, okay. Yeah. Just keep going. I'm going to get upset. Yeah. Don't stop me, please. I want to just plow through this. Yeah, right? Just go. But next week, <laughs> next week, I say it's go home because next week they announced that it's, a, it's a, it's the WrestleMania SmackDown. Now I legitimately thought this was because, uh, 
Raw didn't want to, or Smack, Fox didn't want to miss out on that WrestleMania money, so they're doing something. Apparently, what they were doing is they're moving a few matches to SmackDown because they want to keep the WrestleManias to about three and a half hours each, which is still seven hours of wrestling over two days. That's a lot of wrestling, but whatever. Next week, there's going to be a, a four way match between the Street Profits. Mysterios, Alpha Academy, Rude and Ziggler for the tag team titles, the SmackDown tag team titles. So that's the first match that's going to be on the WrestleMania SmackDown. They did have an eight-man tag, Alpha Academy, Rude and Ziggler win that. Uh, you get more stuff with the Universal title, and then Seth Rollins comes out, uh, and Cesaro as well. They do a face-to-face -face in-ring interview. It is whatever. Uh, and then Carmella. I'm putting up something really good over Jamie's face while he's sleeping, by the way. So... You should leave it the whole time. That was really funny. I was mm. going to try to last the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't get budged because you'd just be like, whatever. Okay, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just start talking about uh, Cameron whether Grimes. or not Cesaro's right. going to so, spin. <laughs> so, well, 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 I'm not going to give a shit about that. Like, honest to God. It's, it is what it is. It's. They so many spin puns that or swing appalled. whatever the hell he says. Oh god, he's just so many whatever, so many puns. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's a match that keep going. That's a match that should be great, but it won't be. I, I was I, just trying to so help James. So then you had like like all. one of the few interesting things of the night, right? Carmella, all of a sudden she's alive. She's backstage. You have Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and her her gimp walking past them, and it's it Reginald. is Reginald. They, yeah, 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 well, Respect. whatever. It's, it's 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 Naya's gimp. What the fuck? He's a chauffeur. So, no, he's not. He's a gimp. He's got so, more air time than Grimes. No, he has it. Grimes had two matches. So for the first time in like three months. <laughs> <laughs> we all know you're wrong, Jamie, and that's okay. You can be wrong. So they walk by, and that's it. And then apparently Camaro's gone now. So then you have a match. It's Shayna Baszler versus Natalia. This was a 34-second match that Natalia won by a roll-up reversal. Then the interesting thing happened. So then you have um, Shia, Naya, Shayna, Naya, Tamina, and Natalia. They brawl after match. That's not interesting. You have the Riot Club, Riot Squad, out of nowhere, showed up. Hey, Ruby. Finally back on my TV. That made JJ very happy. Uh, they take down Nia, and then out comes Mandy Rose and uh, Dana Brooke, and they beat up the Riot Squad, and then beat up Shayna, and then out comes Lana and Naomi, and they beat up Nia, and then beat up M Mandy and, and Dana. All this stuff going on, okay? So now you've got all these tag teams that... Are feuding, so there's something going on with the tag team division, right? Well, we're going to find out on Monday. So then Carmella is then approached backstage by Billy Kay, making her return to TV. Thank you, Billy Kay, who presents her with her resume, which she initially rejects, and then says, Wait, I'll give it a look over. Give me more, Billy Kay. She should be your WrestleMania host, but goddamn Hulk Hogan stole it. Uh, oh, by the way, Logan Paul's here. No one gives a shit. Uh, if you if you give a shit, good for you, sure I don't. guess. It didn't help with ratings. Uh, then you have Sammy Car Sammy's red Sammy Zayn's red carpet premiere. Uh, he asked Logan Paul to be his guest at WrestleMania. He agrees. It's, I don't care. I don't care at all about this. The, 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 the <laughs> I can't resist, man. I love how he. I don't love it. I hate it. How he, <laughs> how he said, uh, you know, he was asking Logan Paul to join him, and he asked him by pointing to the sign. It's just absolutely. Oh, there was, there was so much pointing and looking at the sign. Oh, you God. know that's what they do. Um, that's all bad. Kale ends up coming out and giving him a stunner and then, you know, pushes off Logan Paul, which is the biggest travesty in the world. Whatever. Screw this shit. Uh, then Edge <laughs> Edge confronts Anna Pierce, Sonya Deville. There's m more stuff with that crap. Then you have Carmella in a match. I was wrong. We're not done with Carmella. She's actually wrestling. She's wrestled Bianca Belair in an actually halfway decent match. Uh, it's a shame that that halfway decent is is like a a, a quality mark for you SmackDown. For this. Oh, oh, did I wake I feel, you up, or, or, like, or did Carmella wake you up for this? Car the the a uh, 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 a different match kind of woke me up. I know, like somebody who hasn't like wrestled a match 
same thing for the past month, right? It's something. It's it's a shame <laughs> that halfway decent becomes like the, the 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 upper echelon of SmackDown, right? But anywho, uh, so it's a decent match. Bianca Belair gets the win. Okay, that's it. You can go back to sleep. There's a promo for WrestleMania SmackDown next week. Which, by the way, not only do you have the Fatal Four Way, you have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal going on next week. With with your mid card vortex of whateverness happening there, there's an, there's an Alberto Carrillo sighting, and you're gonna have uh, what's left of Retribution. Uh, who cares? Who even cares? But that that's gonna be on SmackDown WrestleMania next week. Uh, then let you know McIntyre is gonna face uh, Corbin is following. It's coming Monday. A Paul Cruz gives another promo. His accent is getting worse and worse by the week. Oh, it is so bad. Oh my god! So bad, it's so bad. Like it's. I mean, it's like so oh, offensively. Wow. I mean, it's like it's like you know, every everybody coming to America was like eight times better than whatever the hell. Oh this my god! Is. <laughs> like whatever he's doing, it's like, oh. just stop, dude. Like it's so bad, it's so like, bad. It's just like he's making weird sounds and <laughs> pretending it's a Nigerian accent, like enunciating it in a way that I, I actually knew. When I lived in Jeff City, actually, there was a family that frequented the restaurant I worked at that, you know, they, it, 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 the husband and wife were from Nigeria. Mm-hmm. They did not sound like this. No. Okay. Nobody sounds they like They did that. not sound like this crap. So, whatever. By the way, uh, their match at Mania is going to be <laughs> a Nigerian drum fight. So, there's mm-hmm. that. Whatever. Mm-hmm. That's probably going to be racist as all get up. Um, more stuff with the uh, Edge... You know, backstage, whatever. Then you have your main event. This started about with about 40 minutes left in the show. You have Daniel Bryan versus Jay Uso in the street fight because they haven't beat the shit out of each other enough, apparently, right? Uh, Edge is on commentary. Roman Reigns brings his office chair to the ramp because that's his thing now. <laughs> Which it's one of those, it's like so terrible. This terrible, it's like, haha, then now it's terrible again where it's like, screw this, I'm so done with you. Um, there's so much more to this Roman Reigns character they could have done, you know, this kind of like Samoan mafia. I'm just whatever. Um, eventually, something. yeah, eventually, uh, Daniel Bryan gets uh, Usa to tap with the yes lock. Uh, then he attacks Edge, then Roman Reigns. Uh, I adding it all up, the universal title picture. Remember, last week was 40 minutes and a half, okay? This week. And, it, and both of these times include the commercials. This actually covered three commercial breaks, the Universal title picture, 41 minutes and 52 seconds of airtime on a two-hour show. Yep. That was SmackDown. So, Dude, I just got to say, there was one thing that, that hurt my heart so bad. Oh, just one? Okay. Just well, yeah. No, this one in particular really hurt my heart because it was just like, well, my how we have fallen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. when I, sorry, sorry, guys. Are we ready to talk? Almost, about almost, now? almost. All I was gonna say sorry. is there was a moment where Roman Reigns is in his office chair and uh, uh, Paul Heyman's behind him, <clears throat> and I was like, you know, once upon a time, we had. The Undertaker and Paul Bear. And now we got Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. And it hurt my heart so bad. Just the yeah. just the decline. Like the best is behind us and we have nothing to look forward to. Anyways, well, I digress. Well, well, we have we have plenty to look forward to, just not on this show or the next show. Although there you go. I don't think Raw was as bad this week. Now it was not. It was. I'll stay awake for this one. It was. Well, thank you there. Thank you for participating, Jamie. <laughs> so <laughs> this was. There's, it, I don't really blame you. Other, other than like the, the other than the little little like sliver of stuff with Billy Kay and and yeah. seeing seeing the Riot Squad a Ruby again. It was pretty much crap. And Carmelo had a de- decent match. But uh, amazingly enough, the best part of the SmackDown show was the part that has been buried the most, and that's their women's division. So, boom, there's that. By the way, yeah. whoever, uh, if Sasha Banks is getting her stuff made by her husband, whoever's doing it, though, my God, she looked fantastic. I'm just going to say it out there unapologetically. Take it as you will. She looked amazing. So, okay. Raw. 
Raw was last night. The go home uh, for Mania Raw. It starts off with a match. No, it doesn't start off with a match. It's a, it's a promo by McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> promo by McIntyre, interrupted by MVP and Lashley, and then Baron Corbin. That's whatever, same thing. Uh, then you go backstage, you got uh, Riddle doing a lot of weed jokes with the New Day. Like, a lot of weed innuendos. And that leads you into Xavier Woods with a match against AJ Styles, of course. <laughs> Same person he's wrestled the past three weeks. Uh, Kofi ends up distracting Omos, which just, you know, or he actually didn't distract. He took a microphone, talked smack, and then literally baseball through it, like, 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 like Danny Duffy, like right at Omos's chest. And, you know, and then he runs through the ring, which distracts uh, uh, AJ and. You know, Xavier gets the the pin, so you get you kind of have a blueprint now for if the New Day wins, how they're going to do it. So there's that. Yeah, distracting Omas will get you the win. Yeah, I mean, you distract the you know the seven foot four inch, three hundred and eighty pound monster. Yes, that's that's a sm- who's never wrestled a match ever. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably gonna be a bad strategy. Uh, then uh, Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. It's Bad Bunny. Roll up in uh, in uh, Bad Bunny's Bugatti. Uh, it's a three point six million dollar Bugatti. We've heard that about twelve times in this show, so I want to let you know that's a three point six million dollar car. Okay, uh, it's overpriced, but whatever. Then Braun Strowman has a promo in a cage. <laughs> I Braun, you dumb, you die. <laughs> Which Shandon, of course, hands get <laughs> make the train noise. Uh, uh, this week's Jamie Faulkner will be played by Shane McMahon because uh, Shane then comes out and calls him stupid and yeah, whatever. I'm so ready for this to be over. Just, just Braun, ki- ki- just, oh, sorry. Just, just, just paralyze him. Okay, uh, no, don't do that. You know, but just, just end this. Uh, then you have a match: Braun Strowman on a handicap match against Elias and uh, Jackson Riker. He beats the living piss out of both of them, pins them both. You know, kind of simultaneously. Whatever. That's that. Uh, then Miz and Morrison are backstage with paint cans. Oh, so they're going to go over to Bad Bunny's Bugatti. I'll say that four times fast. And they start painting uh, the Bugatti, you know. I am 99.9% sure it was ketchup, too. Because you look at the way it ran, it was definitely not paint. <laughs> so, uh, then Bad Bunny comes, you know, comes to hear about this, coming to check on his car, and gets beat up by, Bad Bunny. by Miz and Morrison, right? Uh, then you have Oscar and Rhea Ripley versus Nia and Shayna, just because they, you know, just beat that same drum every time, right? Yeah. Um, they announced though, this is the one good thing that happened from all this, okay? So they announced that Saturday WrestleMania there's going to be a women's tag team turmoil match. It's like a gauntlet. Two teams start when one gets eliminated, another team comes out, and then last one standing is the winner. The winner of that match on Sunday faces Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. And they announced that it's going to be Lana and Naomi, Mandy and Dana Brooke, Natalia and Tamina, and the Riot Squad. Hey, Ruby. Two shows in a row. Oh, my God. Uh, by the way, th- th- this match was a throwaway match like we all thought it was. Rhea Ripley ends up attacking Asuka when she's on the top rope, throws her off onto the apron, and then beats the crap out of her, throws her in the ring so that Shayna can get a pin. So... Oh, I guess Rhea's the bad girl in all of this. Like, come on, so lazy writing. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey guys. I was waiting for it because hey. it was definitely all him. Hey, hey, this ain't lazy writing. <laughs> this is tried and true. Everybody knows when you have two people that aren't supposed to be together and one turns on, it creates electricity. Then eventually what we're going to do is they're going to be, you know, arch rivals and we're gonna bring them together and we're gonna call them the female mega powers <laughs> well you're just gonna marry janetti oscar one of the two yes i already got a barbershop <laughs> so uh, there's that then you go backstage mvp with cedric alexander and sheldon which is actually a decent promo and i'll mention i'll say mm-hmm. why in a few minutes here we were all mad when they broke up the hurt business right i know jamie was I'm super pissed. Uh, actually, MVP and uh, Bobby Lashley were super pissed about it, and the internet was like oh, on Sheldon fire. Sheldon apparently had words with Vince. I heard about it too, like heated. 
Word. Yes, yeah. Nick. What about you? Do you weren't happy with it either? Were you? No, nah, I wasn't you, happy about. It. Like, I mean, even was, uh, the thing I don't like about it is you just just the concept of beginning a faction and then almost killing it or killing it, but almost immediately after creating it, it makes well, no sense whatsoever. Okay, it's been a year for yeah, but her business. I know, but still, that's not a lot of time. Well, not, I mean, but it was 2020, so it was basically like four years. <laughs> but the thing is, it finally caught steam. That's a bad so joke. Here's Thank you. Her business was a thing. The hurt business was a thing, and it finally started catching steam. It I, finally I'm, started I'm going. I'm with you. They started making sense. And then as soon as they, they got moved the belts off, cut of their them. legs out from underneath them. I hear you. Like, come on, man. I hear you. Well, the reason I ask that is because there's something coming up. So real fast, you got a little promo backstage with an interview with Nia and Shayna. They get interrupted by all four women's divisions. So I get to see the Riot Squad in person. Hey, Ruby, uh, that made me happy. Uh, and then. While they're after they all come out individually, then comes Billy Kay right through the middle of it. Excuse me, and they're like, what are you even doing here? You're not even in a tag team. So, well, I have given my resume to Carmella, and she's going to get back to me on that. And I'm sorry, more Billy Kay in my life. Please give me more Billy Kay. Um, then after that, the reason I was asking about the whole hurt business thing is you had a match between Lashley and Cedric Alexander. And this is my opinion, the best match of the night. So, thousand percent. It was, <clears throat> and the reason is because, I mean, Cedric Cedric is overlooked like nobody's business. Period. You know, he's finally getting some mm -hmm. sort of push, and I appreciate that. Ever since he joined the Hurt Business, became a tag champion, and I didn't know what they were gonna do with breaking it up. I was like, well, there goes Sheldon and Cedric down to the pits of catering or something. You know, right? No, they're playing up this whole. Like, fallout angle between MVP and Lashley and Cedric and Sheldon to a T. It's, I, it, Lashley can lose the title at Mania. Shit, Sheldon and Cedric can cost him the title for all I care. Hopefully not, but, you know, I don't think it matters because I think there's a future in this. This is something that I could see that you 50 50 book this shit. This this is something that I like. This match was great. Started off with uh, Sheldon and Cedric jumping Lashley before the match started. Then they got to it. Lashley actually took in this match, which is shocked the crap out of me. Uh, but it was yeah. it was a great match. It ended with dominance by Lashley. You know, hurt locking them both out, which kept his character strong. MVP was on commentary, which is always great. So. I, this to me was like the like big redeeming factor of this night. You know, there was a lot of like okayness and then this was, wow, that was good. So can we, can we all just agree that this iteration of MVP is way better than when he was actually wrestling full time yes, back in the day? 100%. I like this MVP so much better. More like hundred percent. He started to cultivate this when he was in Impact because he or TNA at the time he was hurt. I mean, it was whatever it was when he was there. Yeah. Because uh, he started wrestling and then he got hurt pretty good, and then he moved. He formed the Beatdown Clan, which is you know hurt business light basically with Bobby Lashley and Samoa Joe. Go figure, right? And he did a lot of commentary. He did a lot of other stuff. He became like the executive vice president, kayfabe or whatever. And so I see a lot of this from that. You can see it's something that he's been working on very similar to how Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt get had, had, had free reign ish, you know, it was in WWE. I see MVP has that too. And that's good because he's taken a long time to develop his character and just being a wrestler. He was never, he was okay. You know, but he was never that stellar. Mm -hmm. This he's stellar at. Agreed. Then Bad Bunny and Damian Priest come out, cut a promo. Bad Bunny was actually not terrible on the mic. I'm gonna say it. He was he was decent. Uh, it's Bad Bunny. It was Bad Bunny. Uh, they pointed the sign a lot. There's that whole thing going on. Uh, uh, that oh oh like we all like we all projected. He actually has something to point out now. Very good, Jamie. <laughs> uh, so. 
we yeah, the first time you weren't lined up with your camera right so you're pointing at a whole lot of nothingness there but the, now you're good um it's a tag match by the way damien priest bad bunny versus miz and morrison shocker right i guess i guess damien priest healed so shocker that's the only reason it wasn't initially a tag match because damien priest was apparently hurt but he's fine whatever uh riddle mustafa ali come out this is actually a good match um mm. You had uh, you know gangs of, of new Seamus on on commentary, and, and that he's not good on commentary. Although I like him as a wrestler, all his other stuff not so much. Uh, but this was a, actually a very good match, and uh, end up being Riddle got the win. Uh, by the way, Queen of the South does premiere their new season uh, this upcoming Wednesday, and I'm JJ is very happy for that after Takeover Night One. Uh, then you got a quick McIntyre promo, and then you go into the main event: McIntyre versus Corbin, which it was, a, it was a fine match. I could care less about it. There was I knew it was going to happen. McIntyre can put a match on with anybody. I will say that about him. There's a reason he's a top guy. That's it. He can he can put the work out there. He gets the win, of course. Um, mm-hmm. And then that's it. That's your rock. We're ready for we're ready for Mania weekend. So, I mean, this was a better than what it had been Raw, which is a incredibly low bar, but you know. Two good matches, one of them really good. A couple little interesting pops here and there, promo-wise. It's whatever. I gave it a snooze fest. I gave it a two out of five. Mm. Don't you both jump in at the same time, you know? I mean... Mm. Well, I'm, I'm thinking. It's like, mm, is <laughs> snooze fest too high? Because of, that, because of the Lashley angle, and, you know, yeah, there's a couple of okay. decent matches... It's a snooze fest for all me. Right, for me. All right, you, all right. you do whatever you want, though. No. If you want to give it a shit fest, give it a shit fest. No, no. I'm, I'm going to give it a snooze. I'll give it a snooze just because of that. And, you know, we did get to see Billy Kay. Yeah. Billy Kay and... makes money, yes. And Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Yeah. Well, that, that's more for me than anything else, but yeah. Nick, yes, did you watch Raw? No, nah, I didn't even bother this time around. All right, so we got a, we got an incomplete from Nick then. All yes. right. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so so that was our show. So any final thoughts as you guys gear up for TakeOver and Mania? Excited for TakeOver. Night one of Stand and night two of Deliver. Um, combined Stand and Deliver. But WrestleMania, I don't know. I really don't know if I'm all excited. Like this is one of the you've seen all these, these matches over the last month. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I I'm, if I'm interested at all. The women's tag but championship is potentially the only one you haven't seen. But let's be honest, it's pro- yeah, legit. I mean, is it going to be the Riot Squad to make JJ happy? Probably not. It's probably going to be no. Natalia and Tamina. That's my oh, guess. Suck. It's going to suck no matter what if it's not the Riot Squad. That's JJ's opinion. But Fair. I don't know. I I have so many more thoughts I could go into. I think that Naya and uh, Shayna actually play very well because they they were frenemies this whole time. You know, they formed a team by convenience because they were both vying for the you know Charlotte's title or whoever Os- Sasha Bailey, whoever was the champion at the time. I can't remember, but they, they just kind of fell into a tag team and it turned out to be kind of cool. We liked it, but I would like to see them both. You know in that title picture. You could actually have a, a vibrant title scene. Now, they won't do this. <laughs> they won't do this. But you could have a vibrant title scene with them, and you could have your other women doing other things, but whatever. So, I, I don't really know if there's any other, any WrestleMania match that I'm really excited to see, to be honest with you. Me either. Like it all. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Almost all of TakeOver, absolutely. I mean, I really want this Orton... Bray Wyatt thing to be done. I, of course, I want to see the conclusion of it. Yeah, let's see how they like, do it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I just want to see how they do it. I, I have. I, I don't want to actually watch the match. I just want to see. How I they think do. part of it is like I want some validation from the, the actual live crowd. You know, you're gonna have twenty five thousand people each night. Mm-hmm. I want to see them boo the things that we yell at that we hate <laughs> that they don't right. seem to think that people like. I want to see them like cheer the things that they have no idea that we like, you know, things like that. Like, like for example, like if, if, you know, Billy Kay comes out by happenstance during some, some part of it and it's the biggest pop of the night, I would love to see that and be like, why is she doing that, you know? And then just boo the piss out of, you know, the whole universal title picture. All three of them. Hot take, hot take. 
they're going to add a, 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 another women's tag team Car- to Carmella the tag team Billy? championship? No. Oh. Iconics. If they Let's do go. that, that's your pop. That's not going to happen. But <laughs> we'll see. That's your hot take. That's, that's a bold. Hey, I made a bold prediction for TakeOver. Jamie got himself a bold prediction for Mania. So, um, Nick, what are, your, what are your thoughts going into everything here? Takeover is always a spot fest. I always enjoy it thoroughly, and I don't know this if the, this may be a popular opinion. It may not be. I don't, or have, for recent memory, I don't really care for WrestleMania, like as a pay per view by itself. I don't like it. Um, it's maybe my least favorite WWE pay per view, and its reason being is it is designed to draw in viewers that are not wrestling fans which is fine from a business aspect aspect i totally respect that but it just it's not for me uh it's for those perennials like you know you got it you got it so like, i like just people it's who just go to, people uh, go to church like like once a year or twice that, a year that's you know? the, like, that like, is people watch wrestling analogy. once a year perfect analogy yeah uh, so it's, you know, it, it has long been my least favorite. So I, you know, I don't expect to enjoy it. So I won't be disappointed. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think that, uh, uh, the New York one was the last good one in my opinion. I think that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. So but three years ago, four Some years ago, four years ago, I believe. Yeah, we watched it at my house. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. There was some good stuff. But that was, I mean, that was also like five and a half hours long. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thankfully, they've moved it. And so, anyway, we will be we will be uh, updating you guys uh, with uh, WrestleMania at, at, as it happens. So, we we're going to record Sunday night after. That's going to include next week's uh, SmackDown because that's kind of part of WrestleMania now uh, with the Battle Royal with the tag title. So, we'll do that real fast along with uh, Night One and Night Two. Uh, so, that'll be released on Monday. Also, our takeover, which we'll record this weekend, will be released on Monday as well. So we'll have separate ones. If you only want to hear one or the other, please feel free. Listen to them both if you like. And if you like us, we appreciate that. Give us a subscribe. Give us a like. We will be back to you on Thursday with our AEW review. Uh, So give us a shout on Twitter, Total Spot Fest, if you are listening to us on Apple or Amazon, or any of your favorite podcast station. Well, if you're there, give us a review. You know, take, take, take a couple seconds, give us a review. Anything you can do helps it. We do appreciate it. We do see all of your comments, your tweets, and your uh, anything is at all. Uh, so let us know. Are you guys excited for TakeOver or Mania? What do you think is going to steal the show? Is it going to be Pete Dunn versus Kushida? It's going to be something else? The Tag Team Championship, MSK... Grizzled young veterans. I mean, there's that's going to be there's the one so many stealing. bangers on. Like this is going to be like our takeover review is going to get bonkers. FYI, because with the yeah. McCard they've got, it's going to be great. So I don't take any more of your time here, Nick. Uh, why don't you say uh, your words to the peoples? Love you guys. Thank you for listening. We'll see you uh, Thursday. Uh, we will see you Thursday, and uh, we will update you then also uh, next week af- af- after our Mania show and TakeOver show with what our long-term plans are based on all your feedback, like I said. But thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter. Jamie, take us home. Well, I think everybody knows what I'm going to say. If you're not down with TSL, I got four words for you. TakeOver, yay! WrestleMania, meh. Okay, I think I'm trying to think. It's take over yeah. one or two words. So there was like, math involved, so I mean, <laughs> there was math involved there. <laughs> Takeover is one word. That's that. Okay, yay is one word. WrestleMania is one word, and meh is one word. Fair enough. I. It's been a long day. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, you want to do that again? It's no. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk to you guys on Thursday. Peace.